Missing the Attic Fans in 2022. See this left control and thermostat control the whole house fan. That's in the off position. This is actually on for the attic fan. Although it's cool enough today. In fact, it says it's 62. It ain't on. However, when it is on, this lamp would be lit neon lamp here and I can turn it on if I want now but we're gonna completely turn it off we're gonna go up in service I have two attic fans and one whole house fan I want to take a look at ye old attic fan this is actually a replacement McMillan motor it was a replacement to the original one I had. These appear to have been put in around 1991. And I doubt they were properly serviced until I got the place. But since I have it, I properly oil it once a year and clean it as well. So that's what we're doing. This is the original thermostat. That's why I meant this can control it when it's on automatically or I can flip the bypass and turn it on. Why would I want that? Well, like right now, um, this is the day after the first start of the air conditioning system. And you saw it's only 62 degrees. Yesterday it was 90, but like right now, even though it's cool out and cloudy, it's still warm up here. You turn this on, you can feel the air just moving through the attic space. So first thing, I got some wipes and oil. Zoom spout. This non-detergent oil, that's important. You do not want detergent because it'll create sludge and, and your bearings are screwed up eventually. And another reason for taking up the wipes, anytime you oil the top bearing, I know where the, bearing, uh, the oil port is. It's just in the same position above, but... Sometimes you make a mess there, and yeah, I ended up digging a little bit on the top of the motor. I also put a little bit on the shaft itself just to help, since I can access it. But, yeah, this fan's been up here for 30 years. So it's clean, but, you know, it's 30 years of being up here. It's about as good as it can get. Nothing's coming off. But the motor is replaced by me, and I know it works fine. Now, to service the whole house fan, but I'm going to go down and turn this fan on because it's rather warm up here. I can easily feel air movement up here now from that fan. Now, there is some stuff stored up here, but it's actually temporary. This happened during the great move of 2019. I'm not going to get into that here, but eventually, you know, some stuff comes down sold or restored or whatever but yeah that's why there's some items up here but it's nice that there is a floor up here just walk in lighting and here's the whole house fan 1982 Emerson 24 inch direct drive there's nothing to service on it the motor is sealed ball bearings so I just wipe it down and just because I added a shutoff switch up here too for it. All right, here's the control panel for the addition attic fan. And it's on right now. Now it's off. I may have mentioned in one video I said about how this this looks cool, but also the real reason why we have them on adjustable speeds. Originally operating both attic fans, even though it's like a division. You know the main house versus uh, everything is because they're um, is somehow creating negative pressure somewhere and causing the flue pipe for a hot water tank to suck down in. I don't know what was causing that. So if we ran them both, we I set this one low and the other one low, and it created enough airflow up there. One thing that's changed though is we had to replace the motor in this one. 
and now it runs at a slower RPM. I think it's only 1100 now instead of 1500, which is fine. So now I can run them both on high and not cause that problem. But yeah, I've maintained these fans. They have the McMillan motor, but the problem is when I moved in 14 years ago, who knows if the um, original owners maintained them. So the damage was probably already done. And it's got to the point where this fan locked up, even though it's properly oiled. But this one is much larger. And why is it like that? Originally, coming over to this light switch here, the one on the right was actually for the attic fan, a manual override. The left one was for the switched outlets in the room. And the reason why, and this really didn't make sense how, why you would do this. You see how I boxed in the window wells in here, because this is an addition. And forgive the little bit of mess in here. And this is the other window well I turned into a bookshelf. And they ran duct work that came from the attic down to the window well. And I guess their theory was you run this oversized attic fan on high and it would suck, you know, create airflow in the basement. The guy was a hobbyist as well and did something with model airplanes down there. So obviously fumes and stuff would have been a problem. But that you should have gone about a proper way with an actual exhaust fan of some sort. What this is, this used to be the windows down here for the basement. So this used to be just a patio. And there's something weird here. They have this duct work running from here up into the attic, but it's not going to anything. It's open down here and it's, it's closed off up there. I don't know what they were trying to do. But, uh, now, this is the part when, we, when the inspector is here at the house. Listen. And if you heard that, for some reason he wired the exhaust fan upstairs to that switch. I just, I just don't under, I just, I find it weird it's wired that way, I don't find out why, but there it is. Even though the fan is larger than the main house attic with the slower RPM motor, it doesn't create a problem anymore. I didn't put that there, the previous owners did. They had labels all over the place when I moved in, it was, a, it was great. They were very OCD and this house was very well kept. It was just some weird things here and there. Like one more thing I'll address. This light switch right here, I added for the light over there. As well as I added a convenience outlet down there somewhere. For whatever reason, running the vacuum up here, etc. But it was originally just tied into the, this, where that light is right now used to be there on the brick was, there's still a plate there. I, I made it so you can access it later on, but I'll, I'll just get up here. But this is what I was talking about and forgive the cobwebs, but that's why look in the middle of your screen, that outlet I put in there too. That's cause I take a little shop vac up here. And yes, I actually vacuum the attics. Also, forgive the mess up here. That's because uh, it was during a move of things and I'm still cleaning things up. But that's one reason why we like to have the attic fans on so it don't get too hot up here. Which brings me to another point. What's the benefit of an attic fan? Well, it, uh, instead, let's just say, instead of it being 130 degrees up here, it's 110. So it's about a 20 degree drop by running the fans. So they are effective. It's not too bad. Uh, Clorox, or I don't know, we call it these things. They work well. And there's the thermostat, same as the other one. This one's set at 90, I think. Yeah. It wasn't that dirty, as you can see. 
but a quick wipe down actually let me hit that bottom there i couldn't see that got my trusty zoom spout here and we'll oil it even tells you right there every six months so as often as this gets used it's once a year now the thing that's stupid is on the original fan video i think from 2008 somebody left a comment and the comment was that I was a dumbass for putting oil in the motor because oil is flammable and it's hot up here and it'll catch fire. Well, somebody might say that's a troll, but given the current state of society today, I just believe some people are just that dumb. <laughs> well, anyways, turbine oil is not flammable. That's what Zoom Spout is. And don't they realize that car engines get way, way hotter? I mean, anyways, yeah, I'm going to put some oil into it. That is indeed a McMillan motor. So let's do this. And that's it. I couldn't show me oiling it because it's kind of hard to do up here. But there's your oil port there, oil port on top. And since the shaft is exposed on top, I just put a little on that as well. And uh, that's it. This should be good until next year around this time. I usually go up in May of each year to do this. So yeah, when it is nice out looking, May, the house is open and we run the whole house fan and or other fans. In this room, the ceiling is too low. So if you're wondering about these, um, yes, they are at least the last decade-ish. But they're built the same as a 90s uh, Lasco. So it's not vintage, vintage. But uh, it, it, my art only comment is they didn't put enough lubricant, you know, grease in the gearbox and oil. But since we know how to work on fans, we just service them like any other, and that they've been fine. They work, they move a pretty good amount of air. Or ideally want to get a vintage alternative, but you know, these are perfectly fine. They're, close, they're pretty much the same. Like Air King kind of kept the 90s designs for a while because they were obviously better made. Now, the ceiling in here being an addition is uh, lower. It's seven foot. I mean, I can just reach up and touch the ceiling. So there's Leah. Um, that's why there's no ceiling fan in here. So we use that. So now, I'm gonna go over and turn this on. It should come on because it's still hot up there. I don't know if I can get, you know, let me see if I can lay the camera down right here. Yeah, I believe this will work. Lay on the, oh, oh it tilted. But actually, yeah, it's, you know, it'll record it. It's on the ladder. So now we turn the fan back on. Good for another season. And that's it. And like I said, the benefit is it does keep the attics about 20 degrees cooler than without. But it's also the nice thing about having a whole house fan when it is opened up. This helps too. But the only thing feeding the addition added from the main is a little Eve, uh, uh, what's the proper term, gable vent. That's still left over, and this fan does push air through it, but, you know, being separate, it's nice to have it on. So here's, you never see it again. I painted the sort of pseudo plenum black. See, I mean, that's as hot as it got today, and it's going to get cool tonight, which bringing in fresh air is nice. And uh, the control panel says so the control panel. Uh, I really like how we set this up. The Dayton threat line level 
line voltage thermostats for the whole house fan, which is the control right underneath. You can and same with the attic fan. That's why that's there. But now we really don't need it. And this, of course, what I never mentioned, this switch is the override. Like you have this on, but the thermostat hasn't kicked in, you can override it. That's perfect for, like I mentioned earlier in the video, when you go up there to do things, you have airflow. It should come, I don't know if it'll come on right now or not. Yeah, it actually does. Okay, there's a pattern here before we wrap this video up. It seems right around 1020 to 1030 on a sunny day is when that attic fan kicks on. You know, that's temperature based. It just seems to be right around that time. And uh, it probably, I didn't turn the whole house fan on. Wait, no, it's been on all day. Anyways, it's probably above the set point there. But even if you were to flip override on, nothing's going to happen. It'll just keep running. It's kind of, you know, you can get a little creative with your wiring there. And it's wired in such a way that this neon lamp right here will come on regardless of the switch. It's based on whether the fan's running or not. But we don't need it on right now because the whole house fan is uh, running. And that's that's it. I mean, I'll, I like doing these videos like this. I'll do it once a year. Thanks for watching. A special shout out and thanks to Liz and Maddie, our superstar video. Thanks again.